Now check this out. This is one of the worst cyber attacks I've seen in a very long time that affected a whole organization. Let's check it out. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I have some more cyber news and I found an interesting article. I saw this, I bookmarked it uh, and I wanted to come back to it to cover it. I actually was going to cover it on my live stream this weekend, but I didn't get to it because of I was too busy answering all the questions you guys asked and I appreciate all my subscribers. I just hit 20K. I appreciate all my subscribers. I appreciate all the members of the channel. You know, you guys are the reason why I do this, you know, is to help people and try to get more people into the tech industry. But anyway, this ransomware attack was super crazy when I saw it. It's, it's basically a non-US company, but it's a Danish company uh, and called Cloud Nordic. And you may have heard of it, but essentially all their customer data has been wiped. So let's hop over to the article and cover it. All right, so this article is on PCMag.com. And as you can see by the title, it says ransomware wipes out data access for majority of cloud prov providers customers. And the crazy part about it, it says, essentially Cloud Nordic has to start over and rebuild its system. That's super crazy. And this is a, you know, a big organization. It's not too big of a cloud organization, but still too big to be going through something like this where you got to start from scratch. But anyway, this article was released on August 24th, 2023. It says a hosting firm in Denmark has lost a majority of its customers data after a ransomware attack infected the company's system. And it says, unfortunately, it has proved impossible to recreate more data. And the majority of our customers have thus lost all data with us. Now, that's a crazy situation, man, for real. Like, and you already know, they're probably going to have to, you know, compensate these customers in some form or fashion. You know what I'm saying? Because one of the main reasons of using a cloud network is the guarantees that they put out there that your data will not get lost. But hey it happened in this case now cloud nordic uh, supplies servers to host email websites and other it services for its customers but the attack is so devast devastating cloud nordic must start from scratch in rebuilding the company's it systems so the whole infrastructure you know what i'm saying they got to go through and rebuild everything that this is super crazy it says in addition to the data we also lost all our systems and servers and have had difficulty communicating, the company says. So even their internal, you know, servers or things that they use, like their main website and all that stuff, you know, they have had issues communicating with companies and all that stuff. So it affected mail, I'm assuming. So that's why they <laughs> it's this is crazy, man. It says we have now reestablished uh, blank systems, name servers without data. Uh, web servers without data and mail servers without data. So they got all that back set up. You know what I'm saying? Now cloud Nordic ads, it says a sister company called Azuro cloud suffered the same attack and has posted an identical notice to the public. So that's crazy. It says the in incident occurred on Friday, August 18th, when the company was physically moving some servers from one data center to another. Cloud Nordic sus suspects that some of the servers it was moving contained a dormant malware infection. So it's crazy, it, it, it laid dormant. I wonder what triggered it. That's what I'm interested to find out, uh, what actually triggered this malware to actually start infecting the servers. Now it says the infected servers were then hooked up to the company network that had access to all Cloud Nordic server infrastructure. Now it says giving the hackers access to both the central admin system and backup systems. So they had both sides of the network and most, most companies they'll have, you know, network segmented off. They'll have like a, a production environment, a test environment and a development environment. That's kind of like the standard. Not everybody has that. Some people just have like a testing and then a production. And what's the difference between those two? The testing is where you like run updates to verify that it's going to work on your production environment before you put those updates on there so like patches and all that stuff you know windows patch tuesday and all that stuff you know uh they'll run it within the test environment or let's say it's a new piece of software they're developing 
they run that in a testing environment because it's essentially it's supposed to be a one-to-one -one, you know network so you have the same patch levels you got the same everything across both of those uh segmented networks and you test things over on the testing network and then once you make sure that it works over there then you push it out to production it's just a, a standard practice practice like devops style practice uh that most organizations at least the ones i've worked for have done but anyway, looks like the hackers had access to both sides of it or whatever. So that's crazy. Now it says giving the hackers across to both the central admin system and the backup systems. The attackers succeeded in encrypting all server disks as well as on the primary and secondary backup system. Now, did they have an offline backup? You know, that's uh, one thing, you know, I'm interested to see if they actually had like an offsite, you know, a cold storage. That's typically what they call that a cold backup location where it's not it doesn't have any access to anything as far as the code backup i mean that would have been a way for them to get the data back you know what i'm saying i understand this costs a lot of money but you know you got to do what you got to do especially if the organization is profitable and you're responsible for a lot of these people data now i'm not a you know a company owner so you know i can't really say much but that is should be kind of like the standard now it says whereby all machines crashed and we lost access to all data the company adds. Uh, but, while, but while the hackers have locked down access to that data, they do not appear to have removed it from the company server. So Cloud Nordic says the unidentified ransomware group behind the attack reportedly wants six Bitcoin. Man, that's not a lot. I mean, it, it is a lot, but I'm saying that's not a lot to, to actually pay. I mean, you would think that would be covered under like a ransomware insurance, you know, that's not that much in bitcoin i wonder if it's a small threat actor it's not a big organization that's why they're only asking for you know one hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars. which you know it's not too bad for an organization not for me yeah <laughs> but i'm saying like a normal organization that's just one year's salary from for a tech engineer or something like that just go down and pay it but uh through your you know ransomware insurance and i says but cloud nordic has refused to pay so yeah uh that might <laughs> that might be an issue on y'all for it, bro y'all gonna get sued you know it's a lot of things that can happen you know when it comes to this because you basically lost all these customers data i don't know how big this organization is I, from what i looked at it seemed like a pretty decent side size organization um but i don't know it says although Corp cloud nordic is hoping customers will stick around after its attempt to recover the director for the company told the danish media i do not expect that there will be any customers left with us when this is over and that's 100 percent true uh i don't know how big this organization is to be honest um as far as i've seen it looked like a decent size but you could have paid that man I would have just i mean i understand you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to uh negotiate with terrorists so to speak but um that's why you have ransomware insurance you know what i'm saying you pay into that insurance uh and this is a good example of that you know one hundred and sixty thousand dollars is not gonna break the bank for a decent sized organization just going on and pay that through your insurance you pay that deductible whatever it is it's probably less than that you know what i'm saying and then they pay the bitcoin and then you get access to and i understand you're taking a chance at the end of the day because you don't know if these actors gonna actually give you the keys to recover the data anyway but still um at least try you know what i'm saying but um and then he said hey he understands i guess he uh, i guess this is a way for him to call it quits with this organization but probably won't be a cloud nordic you know in the future so sad situation but hope you guys enjoyed the video and like I said, this was an interesting article. You know, it's super crazy to see an organization, you know, kind of go down because of ransomware. You know what I'm saying? The whole organization is gone. You know, all the customers data, they're gonna have to, you know, obviously, you know, pay or compensate those customers in some form or fashion because they probably, you know, put in there, put out there, just like all these cloud pl platforms, they put out there, yeah, we secure your data. That's the purpose of, uh, getting cloud services because this organization is taking on the responsibility of your data and make sure this make sure it's accessible as well so this is not their fault this is not the customer's fault at all you know their personal their internal network was compromised as well which took down the whole cloud platform so if let's let's say the the customers had not patched a certain server or something like that if that's what they offer as far as their services um and they got hacked then yeah it's not 
cloud nordic's responsibility but at the end of the day if the whole infrastructure goes down it's not those you know customers responsibility to make sure um their stuff is patched because your back end wasn't patched properly or it was compromised in some way so it's kind of on your fault but we'll see what happens i'll keep looking into the story and if i see any updates i'll uh update you guys on the channel but i appreciate all you guys for coming through you know checking out the video and also give me your thoughts down in the comments below i would like to hear your thoughts about this organization you know being hacked like this you know let me know what your thoughts are and go down and like the video if you enjoyed the content and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel and i hope you guys have a wonderful day and a awesome work week and of course keep it tech